A corpse should be left well alone. Oh, I know very well how the secrets beckon so sweetly. Only an honest death will cure you now. Liberate you from your wild curiosity. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today is a day that I've been waiting for for quite a long time. I'm going to show you how to do a Lady Maria makeup look. Over the last two and a half years, I've become enamored with this character. She's one of those characters that you don't come across very often in gaming. She is a strong woman with a complicated past. You can't say at all that she is a hero or perfectly good, but she shows you that even if you've made mistakes in your past, even if you feel overwhelming guilt over some of the things that you may have done or the person that you may have been, you too can atone and do some kindness with your life. That's what really touched me about this character. So today, teaching you how to do this makeup look is an absolute honor for me. If you want to see how I achieve this dramatic makeup look, just keep on watching. Just like last week, I started out with my face primed and with a layer of foundation. From there, I'm going to prime my eyes, which is a very important step in keeping all that makeup which you work so hard on, on your face for hours and hours at a time. The next step is to put on concealer and any areas that may be dark, discolored, or have acne. What I like to do is apply it right underneath my eyes in a V shape on my cheeks to enhance that part of my face and on any spots that I may want to cover. I like to blend the V shape first just because it doesn't smudge anything that I may have put right underneath my eyes. Once that's all done, we can get started with the eyes. To me, this is the most exciting part of the tutorial. Now I'm going to use the Anastasia Beverly Hills Modern Renaissance Palette, which is my favorite palette of all time. Back in the day, you would never find a palette like this with both nude colors and beautiful deep reds and pinks. So I really appreciate this color scheme and I thought it would be perfect for Lady Maria. Now we're going to start out with that smoky lavender shade called Buon Fresco. Because I use it so often, I actually bought myself a smaller version so that I can use it all the time. Now this is going to go on as a transition shade. Now because Lady Maria has some very deep set eyes with some very pronounced purple shaded makeup, I'm going to put this very deep underneath my eyes. So don't be afraid to really put a lot on because it enhances the look. For me, Buon Fresco is the perfect shade because it's smoky lavender. I ended up going back into the 3D renders of the character because that came out this past year just to see exactly what her makeup looked like so I could be especially prepared for this. And it was a smoky lavender. However, I don't think that this may work for all skin tones. I was very concerned about if you have, say, a medium, a warm, or a deep skin tone that you might be concerned that this might look very ashy on you. Just know that I totally understand. And if you have a warmer skin tone, Tone or a deeper skin tone than mine, feel free to use a, either a deeper purple or a deeper brown. If you can go for a smoky brown, that's great. But I just wanted to make it super clear that if you have a deeper skin tone, you can absolutely do this character. I want you to feel like you can succeed in doing this. So feel free to substitute this shade at any time. I've also put in my contact lenses, which is the Princess Pinky Twilight Reborn contact lenses in the color gray. Now there have been so many discoveries made for Bloodborne in the past year, it's really been quite amazing. So I went back into the 3D renders that they created for the character to check on her eye color because some people interpret it as gray, some people interpret it as green, and it really was in the blue-gray spectrum. So if you wanted to do a blue or a gray contact, that's perfect. Now that her face is a total purple mess, I'm going to go in with the shade Warm Taupe and put that all over the lid of my eye. Note that I fill it in about three quarters of the way in because we're gonna add some other colors really soon. And then we smoke it out and blend using a fluffy brush. Now this is where we can start with some fun colors. I'm going in with a mix of Venetian Red and Love Letter in the outer corner of my eye. Now, if it gets messy like it just did with mine, we can blend it using the same fluffy brush. 
Now to top off the top of the lid, I'm going in with the deepest brown color called Cypress Umber, and I'm just putting it on the very inner corner of the eye. And then blend that out again. You can use a fluffy brush to brush off some of the excess powder that may have fallen onto your cheeks. Using a small fluffy brush, I'm going to go in on the under part of the lid using the color Warm Taupe. And just like with the upper part of the eye, we're gonna do about the outer third of the eye with the color Venetian Red. To top it off, I'm going to add more of that deep cypress umber color to the inner corner of the underside of my eye. Now that we're done with that step, I'm going to blend all of the under part in with the big fluffy brush. Now that we're done with the eyes, we're going to apply some lashes. Now for Lady Maria, I really love this set of lashes by House of Lashes called Feline. Unfortunately, they have been discontinued, but what I would recommend is buying a smallish pair that really flares out in the end, and that will give you an impactful look. So now because I haven't trimmed these yet, I'm going to use my lash glue, which is Duo, and put them on the pan, like so and then let them dry for a good minute or two. I find that if you don't let the glue dry for a minute, it won't be tacky and then you'll just be crying. During that minute, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to trim the ends of my lashes so that it'll fit my eyes. Most of the time the lashes are really big and you may or may not have lashes that are the right size. So feel free to trim them to the size that fits you best. Now if you feel that you've overdone it at all, you can also take this minute to blend out the bottom. I feel that for this look it's smoky enough that you don't necessarily have to do this, but if you want to, you can add a little bit of concealer to the inner part of your cheek. I'll actually do that just in case I have fallout. I can't see very well right now because I'm not using my normal mirror. So I'm going to be safe rather than sorry and do that while the glue dries. That even evened out my complexion just a tad, so it ended up being a blessing. So now that a good minute has passed, I'm going to dip the lashes into the glue, taking care to put the most glue on the corners, because that's what is going to need it the most. And now say a silent prayer for me as I put on these lashes on camera. Now you may also want to put a layer of eyeliner on. I find that it's not always necessary when I'm putting on lashes because they usually have a black band. Now with white glues like the Duo one, don't be afraid if it has a little bit of the white left over that will dry clear in a couple minutes. Now using mascara, the one I'm using is the L'Oreal Voluminous Lash Paradise. I fuse the two layers together while at the same time darkening up my natural lashes are a tad on the light side. And now that the eyes are done, let's move on to the eyebrows. I'm using the NYX Microbrow Pencil in the color Taupe, making sure to overdraw just a little right here at this point in my face just to emphasize that high arch eyebrow. To prepare for dressing as Lady Maria, I spent a lot of time looking over the overall color scheme of Bloodborne, which tends to be very muted with certain hints of shades like red and purples here and there. So what I did for Maria's face was I wanted to adhere to that overall color scheme by instead of contouring with a brown color the way that you normally would, I like to contour with that same shade that you get in the Modern Renaissance palette, Buon Fresco, that smoky lavender. If your natural skin tone is warmer or deeper than mine, you might find this tone to be a little bit ashy, and if that is the case, if you don't feel comfortable with this color after testing it out, definitely feel free to swap this out for any bronzer that works for you, whether that is a brown bronzer or if you want to go theatrical, you could do a different shade of purple. The sky is the limit with this, and don't be afraid to be creative when you do costuming. 
to contour, what I do is I like to suck in my cheeks just a tad to find the natural shape of my face and where the cheekbones naturally suck in, and then I usually just enhance that with the color. I also like to contour the side of my face and underneath my jaw to create a more pronounced jawline. The next step is I like to contour my nose. Because so many of these video game characters have these completely straight noses, I like to emphasize that look and make my nose look a little bit more perfectly straight. I'm using a nose contour for this step, also in the shade Buon Fresco. I definitely didn't do a perfect job, but that is okay. What we're gonna do is buff out that color a tad and then add a little concealer to the bridge of my nose to perfect it. With the cheek contour, I like to deepen it even more. So I'm going to go in with an e.l.f. bronzer in a deep shade to only darken the very, very edge of my face. So now it looks like my cheekbones can cut through unsuspecting hunters, just like Maria. And now for the icing on the cake, I'm going in with powder. A lot of people like to use loose powder for this step, which you absolutely can, but because I really like to have a full coverage airbrushed look for any costume, I'm going in with the MAC Studio Fix Powder Plus Foundation. Now I am what I think is the palest shade, it's um, NC10. This step can also be used to buff out some of that contour you did earlier, just in case you feel that you might have overdone it. With characters like those from certain video games like Bloodborne, I think that going in with a completely matte face will make you look stunning, so this step can be optional. But I like to do a little bit of highlighter just on my cheekbones to emphasize the lightness of them. I'm going in with the Becca Shimmering Skin Perfector Highlighter in the shade Pearl, which is a white shade. For any skin tone though, I recommend going just a shade lighter than what you are. Now the final step on the face is setting spray. Especially when we're using such a high coverage powder, we don't want it to look too powdery over time. So a setting spray will really melt that all down. Just like last week, I'm going to put some foundation on the lips, followed by lipstick on the top with an ombre effect on the bottom. I love this look because it makes the look look extremely theatrical. I see this in a lot of Asian looks as well as Cirque du Soleil does this a lot. When I went to see Volta a couple months ago, I was really looking hard at their makeup and they did this sort of top lip and bottom foundation lip look which made me feel pretty great and I was extremely inspired by it. Now for the top, the shade that works best for you will vary. You could use a nude pink, a nude, even a grayish look. I highly recommend if you are comfortable with a grayish shade, which is part gray, part nude, definitely go for it. I think that it looks perfect for Lady Maria. For today, I'm gonna try something a little bit different from my norm, which is a little bit more gray. It's the Dose of Colors lipstick in the shade Sleepless. After studying her lips pretty extensively, they're very high at the top, so I tend to overdraw. Now give yourself a round of applause for all the hard work you just did. The face is done. The final part is I'm going to do my hair. For Lady Maria, she has a hair color that is so hard to interpret. Before the 3D renders came out, and I have to extremely applaud Sana DSK, Zully the Witch, and Lance McDonald for pulling all of this unknown data from Bloodborne and present it for us because I went into her character render and really painstakingly looked at every detail so that I could do this tutorial with proper respect to her character. Her hair color is a very, very ashy blonde. If you look at the color scheme here, it's on a yellow spectrum, but it turns toward gray. So I would personally interpret that as a light ash blonde, but you can easily use your own blonde hair, silver hair if you happen to have it, which would be fabulous, or go for a wig in either of those color ranges because it is so hard to interpret her actual hair color. Now, to be honest, most of the time, my hair is a little bit more gray than this, but I just got it done, I just got it bleached, and they toned it to be pretty ashy, but it's just a tad yellow for my taste, but at the same time, I think that it would work well because it's still a very ash blonde. Now, I'm going to re curl my hair because they, they blew it out, RIP, beautiful blown out hair, and I'm gonna go back to curly, and then we'll be back for the final look. so 
much for watching. Now, if you liked this transformation or found it useful in any way, feel free to give me a like and subscribe to my channel for more. Next week, I'm going to do a video that's been highly requested, a description on how I made my Rakuyo sword, which is Lady Maria's signature weapon. So if you want to see that, make sure you hit that bell button as well so that you'll get notified the moment the video comes up. I hope you all have a wonderful day or night, wherever you are, and have a good one. Milady. Milady. My hunter. I don't play that old charm. The ladies. I'm just gonna spritz some more spending spray on myself. Why not? <laughs> I hope that didn't get in my water. God damn. <laughs> I brought tea. Hey, ooh, girl, it looks so good on the monitor. I bought these a long, long time ago. God, what the hell am I doing? <sighs> I'm so sorry. You're welcome. <laughs>